just, I think for a guy his size, he was the most intimidating player in the NBA. Here right now. Oh, Allen Iverson, what a move. Allen Iverson. He drove me to, to um, be as obsessive, more obsessive about the game because I had to figure out how to solve that problem, you know? And, uh, and I told him, when I saw him here this weekend, I said, man, you don't realize how much you push me. And I don't think you know, people nowadays realize how great you were as a player and uh, you know, how big of a problem you were for, for defenses. Said, Nobody at his size could have accomplished what he's done. When I grabbed the ball, I heard Phil Jackson yell, Michael. Michael. Iverson has Jordan. The crowd is into it. And I gave him a little cross to see what he bite on it. I let him set his feet, and then I stepped it back again. Allen shakes free, gets two! Tell me about the little guy's crossover. Very quick. The Allen's evolved very well uh, with this crossover. Uh, they do allow him to you know, pick the ball up and carry it pretty high. I figured that he wanted to come back to his right hand, but you know, he keeps the ball real low. And uh, he's small, and, and he's certainly closer to the ground than I am. So, I mean, <laughs> his quickness is, is, is unbelievable. Uh, Steph, I noticed that you uh, ditched the uh, sleeve, but uh, what was kind of the decision uh, behind that? Is your elbow feeling better? Low-key, I've always wanted to be like Allen Iverson. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that was the only way I could really come close. Um, but it just wasn't feeling right, just kind of a split decision, just whatever. Um, Successories, it don't really matter. Um, just keep playing. I got AI sitting this on this side. I Melo sitting on this side. Kmart over there. Can be right there. To see AI, all I heard was, oh, yeah, oh, you a bad teammate. He this, he that. He don't show for practice. He don't do this. He don't do that. And then I get there, he practicing every day. Right. Cooking. <laughs> Cooking. It was, I promise you, it was, it was a couple of days I ain't seen him miss, bro. We go out, we go to Miami or go wherever, LA, we kick it. I go out and everything. Next day, 45. Yo. <laughs> you yeah. was with me, right? Yeah, you was there. You was there, and you had 45 today. Hey, man. That's my special power. <laughs> right. He's an icon around the world, and he's pound for pound one of the greatest that's ever played in professional sports. He's a rebel with the cause. Uh, the cause is Allen. He came in his style, his way. I ain't care what nobody say. As a coach, dealing with him on a daily basis, nobody trains you for that. <laughs> you know, I got a chance to Watch this young man play. Arguably, and it's not that many, it's the greatest little man ever. Probably the best score for his size in the history of the NBA. Tough as nails. Because you know, obviously, we all, Ken and Shaq can attest, you're always physically beat up in the NBA. And for this little guy to play, have such a career like he had, I look forward to when the Sixers put his number in the Raptors. And when he goes in the Hall of Fame, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to watch him play. You know, we always talk about who's a dog and who's not a dog in the NBA. This guy was definitely a dog. He always came to play every night. You know, people people perceive him as, as being a problem person, but I know him personally, you know, great guy, uh, loves to compete, loves to win. I can honestly say if they faced anyone else besides the Lakers in the finals that year, he would have a championship win. I wore number three because of Iverson. He changed the whole culture of the game. And, you know, one of my pound for pound, that's fair to ever play, you know. Um, six foot, 155, but the stuff he was doing is un was unheard of, man, unseen. So, you know, I got a tremendous uh, amount of respect for Allen Iverson. He, the way he changed the game, just it was an honor just to be able to play against him. Well, I think he's um, one of the cornerstones of 76 er history. And, uh, you know, I think it's awesome that they're retiring his jersey. Like I said, it was someone I watched growing up, man, and, um, you know, I think it's an unbelievable tri tribute for him and his family. What he's doing is way more impressive than what LeBron is doing because, LeBron, you just hit on it. How big is he? 6'9", yeah, 260. He could play bully ball. Allen Iverson pound. can't play bully ball. He getting... And how many times was pound AI... Pound. pound for pound. How many times was AI getting knocked to the floor, getting right back up? And the way he can electrify the crowd, not only with his crossover, but what the way he scores, man. It, it was just... 
unbelievable. It was hard to guard. I guard. I, I actually had to guard him. So I played with LeBron. I had to guard AI. AI never stopped moving. He never took a playoff, and he played hard on both sides of the court. He didn't take rest on defense. As a kid, Michael Jordan, number one, Allen Iverson's number two, and uh, obviously Kobe's number three, my top three favorite players of all time. So, um, you know, to take myself out of the moment and to think about, you know, 20 some odd years later, Allen Iverson would be the one, you know, his voice would be the one dedicating uh, something to me in his arena, uh, in his city. Uh, I couldn't have written it any sweeter, any better. Um, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm so appreciative of, you know, obviously of every organization that do something like that because they don't have to. Uh, but, you know, my guy, man, I, you know, guys know he's one of, the, one of the two reasons I wear number three. And, um, you know, every time I see him, it's all love, and I appreciate that, and I try to rep, rep that number three to the fullest. So I hope I made him proud. Iverson is one of the greatest players to ever play the game. He's in ever? the top five. Ever? He's in the top five. And the reason why I say that because he's probably the only guy that, that takes a beating like I do. Never complains. He has so much heart for a little guy. The guy is probably the first guy to wear braids on his hair in the NBA. Then he puts on his bandanas. And I said, what in the world are these conservative folks going to say? I, 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 loved, I loved it. I didn't, it's not that I didn't want to face him, but knowing that it's going to be an uphill battle. You know, I always had a tough time with little, really fast guys. <laughs> and as you can see right there, he got by me pretty easy. Bubba yeah. Chuck! But yeah. um, he was just he was just fearless. Oh, you know, he was fearless. I mean, he, he never let up. I mean, he was a warrior. Um, you couldn't bully him. I could bully a lot of guys. You couldn't bully him. I mean, AI was my guy for sure. Toughest guard to defend because of their driven ability. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. AI. I'm gonna have to go with Allen Iverson, man. Allen Iverson is one of the guys that, uh, because of his speed and quickness, is just hard to guard. <laughs> yeah, you have to really, really focus on him. I really looked up to AI. You know, he was uh, he had heart, carried his team, he scored, he played D, um, and he was small. You know, it would have been crazy. I think that would have been the person that would have that probably would have made me have, be starstruck a little bit. You know, when I when I finally played against Kobe, it was my first game. I was like, that's Kobe. You know, I, I was kind of tripping out about it, but if AI was on the court, I probably would have been like, man, this is this really AI in front of me. It's not a guard out there that, that does things like he's doing on the floor. I mean, he's unbelievable. That is a sensational move from Allen Iverson. At six feet, he is basically unstoppable. Iverson just come at you and you, you know, you're like, what's gonna happen next? AI has been doing it for years. You know, his crossovers, his his toughness. One game in Philly, he was just rocking the points up. Anderson finds his way in for two. How did he do that? When I just, you know, found myself looking at him, like, um, you know, he's just, this, this guy is unbelievable. He's an assassin, especially in the full course. He can't be stopped. This is Iverson. Count it, and a foul by AI. The toughest player probably to stop in the open court is Allen Iverson. I mean, I think he does a bulk of his damage and scoring in the open court. The speed that he possesses from baseline to baseline, I don't think it's matched by anyone in this league. <laughs> he has to get some credit. Yeah, he yeah. has Dikembe Mutombo, but Mutombo was not known as an offensive weapon. He's more known for his defense, mm -hmm. hence the four uh, uh, defensive uh, MVPs. Yep. Skip, to be the size that he was, and to be able to do the things that he did, nobody his size mm -hmm. in the history of the game could score the ball like he could. He had to score because if he didn't score, there weren't going to be any scoring. Yeah. And like I said, I think the players that's in the league have a greater appreciation for what he did and who he was as opposed to the fans that watched him play. Because the people that played against him and the people that admire him that's now playing in the NBA, they glow, they heap praise upon Allen Iverson. That because they, they know. In fact, I've heard some greats, I'm not going to name them because these were sort of off the record comments, mm -hmm. but they put him in the Michael Jordan category. He was, and I think right. LeBron James says he is our Michael Jordan. Right. The image of the NBA player now, is it closer? to the Michael Jordan of the NBA, or is it closer the, to the Allen Iverson of the NBA, the way Allen is now? Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's a tough question for me to answer, and a tough question to, you know, to compare the two. I mean, you're talking about a different era. You're talking about a long run of success with, you know, with mature stars. you got younger players coming in a lot earlier than, than I'm pretty sure anybody's anticipated, and, um, and it's not quite as developed as it once was because of that, you know? So 
I think we have to be very understanding. Uh, and you know, this is the United States. This is America. Everybody has a freedom of expression. Yeah? And I don't think we should judge uh, Alan uh, for for the way that he wants to express himself. You know, uh, sure, there's going to be some opinions and questions about. You know how he does that, and who he offends in certain situations, or how you know people perceive that as offensive. And I think that's those are things that Allen has to deal with as well as Davis Stern in the league. Uh, but to ask them to say that you know Allen should act like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley is unfair to those individuals at this particular time. We have to be very lenient to those young kids because of. You know some of the the lessons in the maturity that they're missing by skipping school early, and you know that's an issue that we should address and try to deal with, uh, so that for the, everybody's is going to prosper from from that individual learning more about what his skill level is for the NBA, to dealing with you know, a lot of the financial situation, the economical situations, just the expectations of the public's respect. You know, so I tell AI this: AI called me and and and. and Un undercover wise, AI an emotional dude. Oh, oh no, no, it, it ain't undercover. Hold on, hold on. Before, to cut you off, it ain't he undercover. calls me once a week and tell me he loved me. That's right. Once a week. <laughs> same here. Same here. He tells me he <laughs> loves me. And, and we love him back, man. Of course. Because AI, AI been Great through a dude. lot, man. Great he's brother. A, he's a, that's, my, that's my little Great brother. Dude. Yeah, no doubt. We're very, we're very, very close. Mm -hmm. And that's saying a lot if you know anything about our history and mm -hmm. some of the things I had to write and right. say. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't, you know, it's shocking that we are as tight, but people don't realize we've always been tight. And a lot of times when we didn't talk is because I jumped in his butt because of what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't report it, but it didn't stop me from cursing him out, right. going off, because what are you doing? You're blowing yeah. this, right? But what I'm saying is, is that I never fail to thank him. I don't think anybody is more, and I'm not trying to sit up there and say he don't deserve, you know, the credit or whatever. There is no way in my mind I would be in, sitting here today with the success that I've enjoyed if it wasn't for Allen Iverson. I mean, that guy, to, to have to be the superstar that he, that he was and to embrace you in a sense where everyone, I don't give a damn what report he talked to, I don't give a damn what interviews he did, I don't give a damn his availability, his unavailability, inaccessible, I don't give a damn what, everyone knew Stephen A and AI mm -hmm. was special. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that. Why well, hey, The thing about him I respect and admire, he's tough. If you hit him, he's going to keep coming back. I'm telling you, the little guy, he is something. He takes a beating. You have certain guys that you know that are going to weather the storm. And Allen is definitely one of those guys who, whatever you throw at him, he's going to take it on the chin, and he's still going to get up and give you 40 points. And then for my first memory, I was very nervous playing against the Eastern Conference champs against Iverson. Oh man, this was something I couldn't wait for the stage. It's something that I, it was like a proving ground to me. You know, I always felt like I, I would have been underrated up until that point, and it was just like a stage I wanted to get to to say, look, if I can go out here and, and do what I need to do, I can put my name on the map. And I was able to do that my first playoffs. You know, this guy changed the league. You know, he's the reason why they put the 2 3 defense in the NBA. He's the reason why they said you can't do the crossover anymore. Um, you know, he changed a lot of things in the NBA. <laughs> Personally, I knew he could get up like that. What's shocking about the dunk is really how high he is. His head is almost at the rim. You know, Allen Iverson has, he's special. You know, at six foot, five eleven, whatever he is. One, to make a play like that, but two, just of what he's done in his career, over his, his career, just incredible. Uh, incredible time and incredible elevation, incredible whatever you want to say. A rebound follow dunk by a guy who's basically about 5'11", 160 pounds. Yeah, over all those giants, pretty incredible dunk, and, and I remember being just shocked when I saw that one. You won't look at Allen Iverson and say he did not reach his potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was MVP of our league once. Mm -hmm. you know, Four-time so. scoring champion. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know. Yeah, uh, nothing. I, if you if he get more out of that, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if he gets yeah. more out of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah unbelievable talent, you know, uh, and an unbelievable culture impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. He made a, He made a, He made your your appearance, your demeanor, your attitude that people thought were threatening, not non-threatening. Right. And realized that it no, it's just a way of. Was that being. good? I, I think so. I, I really do. I think I think overall, you know, he had his qualms. You know, things about he probably should have done better. But in terms of a 
a breaking down of a wall and a barrier of uh, stereotypes, I think he changed some of that. When I first saw him, he looked too small, too skinny. And I said, this little boy can't be what I thought he was. Iverson. From you shoot this thing and count it! Cool that you ever placed in front of Allen, he always would excel. You could never count him out. It's time to get down. Speed and such a quick first step. You are helpless when AI has it going on. To be that quick in his energy. This guy is amazing. It's something that makes him remarkable. Man is competitor. He laid his body out there and he always gave him his all. He get knocked down and then continue to play, and we look at each other and say nobody could play through a hit like that. This guy has such courage. You love the fact that he is fearless. Philadelphia loves Allen, and I don't think they will ever forget Allen. And maybe there'll be a statue one day. The fact that he's so great and so talented, and has impacted our game in so many ways. When you talk about the greatest players of all time, he's always going to be one of the guys you mention the most flopping player you've ever played against. Flopping? Yeah. He said yeah. you flop more than anyone else. He said you would touch him a little bit and he would fall into the stands. Hell yeah, he know that. That's... <laughs> I, every time I guard Allen Iverson, I just get in foul trouble. Right. I was just like, damn, dude. I want to guard my dog, my hero. Boop, foul. Hey, I stayed Boop, on foul. the ground, dog. Hey, I didn't tell you. He had, run, he had dribbled the ball, run right into me, and then, you know, I'm bigger than him, so I'm going to push him for show. Foul. <laughs> Two quick ones. Uh, he meant everything to me. Um, you know, I grew up in North Carolina, and I loved Michael Jordan to death. But I think uh, Allen Iverson had the biggest influence on the game of basketball than anybody. You know, I, I don't even think it's close. And a lot of kids and even guys in the NBA will tell you, you know, uh, the, the sleeves that guys wear in their arms now, that's Allen Iverson, you know. Some guys wear it as a fad now and stuff like that, but that's Allen Iverson. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted braids because of Allen Iverson. You know, I wear number three the way that I play because of Allen Iverson. So uh, it was tough to see him retire because, you know, he's, he's AI. But um, like I said, um, it's a few guys that I played against in the league. I'll never forget the first time I played against him, and, and he was one of them. So... It's, it's sad to see him retiring, but he, he's one of those guys that his imprint on this game will never be forgotten. Allen Iverson told me a long time ago, shoot or shoot the ball. Shoot or shoot the ball. So I always try to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> Did he say it to me in practice? No, I think it was, I think it was after a game. I think it was after a game. He was at the top of the heat, mm -hmm. popularity-wise. And... This dude had no reason to trust anybody. You understand? And certainly not me, because I'd grill him. He played like garbage tonight. He had more reason not to trust everybody. <laughs> than to trust exactly, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, but he, I knew he fit right in my alley because what he respected most was realness. Mm -hmm. And he knew I wasn't going to lie to right. him. And so that went a long way and, and you know, the kind of things. And I never get in, and I've never told the story, and I ain't going to tell y'all what he said. But he went the hell off on Larry Brown so bad one time. Told me to turn the tape recorder on and went ballistic. <laughs> Told me that. He didn't say turn it off. He said turn it on and went ballistic. And he said things about Larry Brown that would have that got him traded at the very least, okay? Because he couldn't stand Larry Brown at first, mm -hmm. right? And he came back the next day and he said, Stephen A., you write that story, it's going to kill me. It's going to kill me. And right in front of him, I turned the tape recorder off. I said, done. I go back to the Philadelphia Inquirer. I said, kill a story. They're like, what? I said, I said, kill a story. It's not going in the paper. I promised them it's not. It's not. There'd be plenty of stories to write. We ain't writing that. Just like that. That's big. You understand? Now, I'm telling you it's the kind of story that could have made my career. I know. <laughs> That Allen Iverson is not the prom king. I know everybody don't like him. I know his history's been, you know, well documented. But we're talking basketball. Y'all need to go back and look at the highlights. That was a poor representation of the highlights. No disrespect to anybody, but I'm a fan of the man. And one story I have. 
we have a practice. He's going hard as I don't know what. The media's been on him kind of all this, and he's just mad. He's quiet. He's not saying nothing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I feel something coming. We go to Milwaukee. It was the best game I've ever seen by a teammate in my life. He gave them 60-something, passing the ball, doing his thing. Was he a difficult player to play with? He only knows how to score. He only knows how to go hard. But I've never in my life, never, played with a player that played as hard as him on the court. Maybe Bobby Jackson, Doug Christie, other guys that played as hard. And so it's a lot of guys I know played as hard, but I've never been with somebody that played as hard as, as him. And so when I see him going through all this, you know, I just, I just hope that at the end of the day, because all we're talking about is basketball. He's, he's not President Obama. And all we're talking about is boop. And if you look at him and what he did, man, can you name me another guy with the heart he had every night. He used to wear hockey pads. You know, the pads that go, you guys probably want them too, the pads that go all the way around you. I used to see him after games, bruised, banged up, and his only thing was, yo, Webb, I got to go hard. You know, if they watch me, this is the first night. This might be the first time anybody's ever come <laughs> see me play. It's just an honor to watch that guy play, man. I'm proud to say I played with him. He was, he was unbelievable. I mean, his scoring ability. He got uh, so many times kicked on the ground, and he always stand up, and he always fight through that. And, uh, you know, I saw they retire his jersey in Philadelphia, so that was a great thing to do, and, uh, you know. The way he approached his game, like, he did everything his way, and he didn't really care what other people thought about him. So, you know, and that's what makes him who he is. You know, whoever was guarding him, you know, he made sure that he was going to get a shot up, and it was going to be a really good shot, and, and the shot that he wanted. I was saying when he didn't practice. I, re I really was. Yeah. I mean, I had to show the other guys that I cared that he would be at practice. But right, in all right. honesty, he played 48 minutes every game. He tried to win every possession. Yep. He played hurt. Played with reckless abandon. Nobody right. at his size could have accomplished what he's no. done. And there's some way, somehow, that he's got to get on some NBA team where he's introduced as a starter in every arena and people can give him the respect he deserves. Because mm. to this day, people don't know who I am. I'll walk into an airport, and wherever I am, somebody will come up to me and, you're Allen's coach. They don't know my name. Right. They say, you're Allen's coach. God bless you, and leave. <laughs> you're the guy who tried to get him to <laughs> practice. practice. <laughs> Rehearse now. <laughs> I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. Not a game, we talking about practice. Not a game, not, a, not, not the game that I go out there and, and die for and play every game like it's my last. Not the game, we talking about practice, man.